All right, YouTube channel. So I'm going to be reading His Enemy, His Friend by John R. Tunis. And I am going to start on chapter one. And I'll be doing different parts. So chapter one. Oh, yeah, and also this book also has um, really good footage right here, you know? It's really pretty. Um, chapter 1 has a lot of German words, so some of it I won't be able to read. But, yeah. So, chapter 1. The black-haired sergeant in the gray-green uniform of the army of the Olaf Hitler, 3rd Reche, sat smoking his pipe on the stone steps of the house beside him was a boy of eight or nine in the faded polo shirt a ragged bear of dark blue shorts and sneakers so fried that both his big toes sucked out uh, stuck out on them the sergeant and the boy were discussing a subject that each considered important, and their serious faces reflected this. <sighs> Was that the only time fled Wilbill Haynes when you scored the only goal for Harvard against Stuck Stuckardt? Asked the boy. No, responded the young soldier. No, as I remember now, he went to the ex exactly. Except, oh my gosh, <laughs> excellent French. That was the year. I know, I know, don't tell me, the boy cried, excited in his voice. I have an account in my scrapbook. Can I show you my scrapbook sometime? Led Wibble Haynes. I can? I know. It was the year Habberge was tied by the racing club of Paris. Thanks to Bonvillet. Last minute goals. Am I right? Right? Only exactly. I didn't play in the particular patch. Match. Not patch. Match. A bad knee. And bad luck too. It was the spring before the war. And that knee kept me out of service for 13 months. Psst. Come here. Come here. Here. He snapped his fingers and held out one hand. A dog was coming towards them. Alright, and then also in this um, video, I'm going to be doing chapter 1 and chapter 2. And that's going to be for the same of each chapters. Alright, so continuing on page 14, the second paragraph. He snapped his fingers and held out one hand. A dog was coming towards them. A white and black, short-haired, distant relative of the fox terrier. He was a kind of a grand rear dog. An animal born in the street. Heaven knows where, where and when. A dog of the most uncertain keen heritage. He approached with caution as the big man took the square pipe from his mouth and leaned forward. Encouragingly. The dog edged near. One glance told you it was a long while since anyone had stroked him. Given him a good meal, he said a kind word to him. The sergeant reached out and netted the back of the animal's neck. Immediately, the dog responded by coming in closer. Then he sat on his hutches, seemingly content for once befriended finally the german rose knocked his pipe on the stone steps and stretched yes of course you can show me your scrapbook i'd be <sighs> oh my gosh where am i at i'd be interested bring it along any time in the afternoon well well we must get the morning report from the blockhouse. It hasn't come yet, and the 
Kirur Hataman will be annoyed. Together they walk down the Grand Rear, the main and only street in the village, Najat Plag. The taunty haired boy in the ragged shorts and tall fled wall hood. The boy walked between them, his tall wagging. Since it was a lovely morning in early June, the street was full of people. It seemed as though everyone they met greatly and sergeantly old lady in the black carry half enough shopping bags, housewives with long loaves of grayish bread under their arms. Children, especially the boys who invariably appeared with walkable, was around. All wished him good. Oh my gosh. I have it like blank out, guys, so I do apologize. So, yeah, as mine is like, yeah. Good addressing as Connell Con- speaking German. Glutentag, Herga Haberst. Glutentag. Although he had told them all of the hundred times that he was not an urbanist, the colonel, but the flebel web, a sergeant and a simple sergeant at that, he responded to their words with an old-fashioned courtesy, speaking in French as a rule, touching one finger to the brim of his stained fortage cap in the most unsoldierly gesture and wishing them good day in return uh, bonjour madame de bond bonjour the old lady in the faded black dress bobbed and ducked her hand guten tag her guten tag there it was once again uh, how often he had spelled it out for them sometimes severally ni ten ni ten but ten it's a been in Frippelo and Orta Frazer, the Che Una opposite. The people of the village simply smiled and went on addressing him to the Herbst. At first, he felt this was intently after, after all, with his tricky French, one could never tell. Perhaps it was their psychonance ways of staring at the fact that the son of the baron from the old army family should be merely a surgeon. Occasionally at night, when he could not sleep due to the roar of the guns along the coast, smatterly anti-craft fire into the heavens, heavens. <sighs> sorry about that, um, he wondered whether the French were stubborn. Uh, stupid and I- isolated. As time went on, however, he realized that the people of the Nogent Plague, what he represented, authority for them. He was a person who, to whom they would protest appeal, with whom they would discuss their grievance. It was a flexible who listened to their uh, op objections to what they felt were unfair regulations of the German high command along the coast. Occasionally, these regulations were changed. More often, they were just ignored by the sergeant and his supervisors. It was easier that way, hence his accepted the greetings of the villagers, and although the military range they comfort upon him is amused, his men and not in infrequently annoyed his command officer. There was a little anyone could do with the stubborn French. The only person who did not call him her breast. Oh my God! I can't even say that. Her breast was the boy in the ragged blue shorts. He felt immediately the sergeant that disliked that, this, and always addressed him as the Fleb Webel Haynes. Perhaps this 
was how the big Germans first noticed him. It drew them together. Their passion for football cemented the bond. That day, the 14th, 105th day of the occupation of the village of the Nogent Plague by the Germans, a day that... All right, guys. Hold on one second. Uh, the day, the day that exploded of such the violence and changed forever the lives of the boy. The phleb wobbled, and everyone in town began to calm and quiet. The village had passed and repassed the same troops for days without end. Often even their first names were known for the townsfolk, harsh-sounding Teutonic names such as Hemalt, Gottfried, and Germahalt. Over the years, some regiments had visited this hamlet, hamlet by the sea, the men sunning themselves along the waterfront or playing football under the direction of the f- flood webble and on hard sandy beach below the cliff never was any one else according regulations by the villagers in fact they often made fun of the other germans not infrequently their faces of all the soldiers and the flibble hanes was a friend he was a friend above all the boys of the village because he was former football player and especially to young jean paul varen everywhere wherever the sergeant went the boys attached himself following from the place to place often to his pals ran and lie glassy <sighs> okay silently older and also a fervent of football when the german sergeant played or coached his men the two boys could not take their eye off of him the younger especially watched with the furious intensity intentness unconsciously even his body moved swung stopped short riposted as by a big German athlete did. In vain, his mother rang the bell for dinner. You spoke to him, and he did not hear. The boy watched, listened to the football talk, played in practice, and went so far as to learn German, so that he would fulfill and understand the soldiering talking. Football was his life, his passion, his existence, and the feeble Haynes was his god. End of chapter one. All right, and in a few seconds, you guys will be able to hear chapter two. Guys, so chapter two. <sighs> Not only Jean Paul Varen, but all good people of Notchen Plague had defendant feelings about the Flit of Webbles Haynes. <clears throat> If one had to be occupied by the Germans, the villagers all agreed it would was better that he should be in town. Why, the horror obstinance of his son of the barn of his brother is killed, and the Luftwaffe, he too, will be a barn. Ah, say what you like, Mysterio. Blood does tell. He's part of the old Switchwilg Holstein Agressy. You know what people are like. You know what those people are like. How true, Madden. How true. Besides, he is a man of the word world, not merely as the ace of the football. He plays a sealer of appreciates the old good wine of the borough ducks and the Normandy Cider 2. All right. Cider 2. Oh, oh my God. Yes, indeed. Well, his mother was French, you know, from Sedan 
to my way of thinking, he might just as well have... Uh, my God. Have been French. Yes, I agree. Eh, bien. His mother was a D. Smarsh from Sedan. For me, he is not militarist, but really a civilized type. He loves the children in the town, and they love him. Why, Mysterious? He is to his their. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he is their hero. That foreign boy follows him everywhere. You know the hero, Auburst was the great defensive back of the Baron of Musain. Once before the war, he played for Germany at the age of 19, too. He indeed, the boys and the girls loved him. If I call Myrian, he doesn't answer. I know he is watching the horror obstance coaching football. To be sure, interjected a fat woman. I, for one, sh shan't forgot either when the partisans burned the bridge at Varsville and that Hobbiton men tried to take my husband off the German last year. Ah, no, I told the Harmon obstruced, look, my husband was besides me in the bed that awful night. He believed me. He even convinced the high command he had contacts, you know. Now the villagers were all talking at once. Uh, yes, only he could have done it. Why not a simple sergeant, perhaps? But he understands the respects, French culture and French civilization. Naturally, his mother was French. But, yet, yeah, after all, he is German. Yes, Miss Stars. Most of these... <sighs> Barbarians know neither Fran France n nor the French. Well, this man is not stony-faced Persian, such as some were have stationed in this town since 1940. Indeed, madam, I recall when the town had to be evacuated. Remember that the time of the big raid on the depth? The Herman Hobbers inceded for us with the commandant of, at Kane. You recall? Those who really lived here were permanent to stay. Oh, I mean, I am entirely in, in accord with you. We are truly fortunate to have him here in Nottigate Plague. Truly fortunate to have him. That was how the villagers felt about the flap level Haynes. Oh my God, that's so much German right there. Okay, I'm going to skip down to this little part to give him his full name. And he was one of the German soldiers who played to be the permanently station of the Noxian Plague, uh, which after a while became the rest camp for troops from the Russian Front. Usually, the regainment or the Blotanian stayed only a few weeks or a month in the village on North Mandy Coast. Then, one wet, foggy morning, the siren would blow. That piercing noise meant the end of peace and response for those Germans from work, from relaxation from the football game, onto the beach, coached by the flick squabble, they hustled back to their billets, fear in every heart, early on the war when Hitler's forces were winning from Crete to Norway, and each month the, a different nation was gobbled up by the greater reeking. The troops had left for the east, singing and cheering, then the war was glorious Rome, but two winters in snow outside Moscow changed this. Now they hardly spoke as they packed and made ready to depart. Stunningly, they collected the rigged main malt bandage, slightly loaded transport wagons. When the short, sharp whistle of the Ob's flubwubble 
um, ragged out. They were lying up along the grand rear. Um, dismissal waiting, inspections, and the com. Okay, commend to move off. Actune, ready face, forward, hump, hump. Oh my god, this book is so hard, guys. Okay, so off in the columns of four down coastal roads to the entire of the east nowadays, the villagers of no pageant. Oh my god, I don't even know why I said that. Of Norgent Plague made an event of this. They lined the streets watching not without pleasure and grim faces of the soldiers watching Sardek remarks of German could not understand. Hmm. They did not seem quite so happy to say goodbye, do they? Would you, my friend, with Russian bear breathing down your neck? Ah, uh, but remember, they used to have nothing but m motorized equipment and all the new English material captured on the Dunker Quay. Remember, madam, that has worn out now. Look at those poor horses and the wagons falling apart. No, the war was no longer glorious for the Germans. Troops of different regiments came and went. Only the harbors remained. It was the corpse decision to leave him at Dodigent Plague. He was valuable there because he had a quality few of his countrymen possessed. The villagers hated their occupying forces with a fierce storm and hatred, looking and longing for only one thing, an allied envision of the freedom from German domination. The hero Abbas knew this quite as well as anyone, yet thanks largely to him, order uh, prevailed in the village. There were no shootings, no terrorist attacks, no raids, as in the other towns along the coast. So far as the Germans could tell, the villagers never tried to single planes or ships, never had a guttled been summoned from the Berlin to restore order. In fact, the high command of Sion had such a good opinion of Nodent Plague that it considered awarding the town a medal for its correct attitude towards German so, troops. Certainly nobody ever called the feble level a keen soldier. He obeyed orders and did his duty. That was all. In private life, he was a... Oh my god, I'm going to skip that because that part was really confusing. Younger son of the agent Baltic military family. Famous in the history of his country. His father had been a colonel in Olans in the first world war. Brought up to the army tradition, he had perhaps had too much of it. Not only did the big, seemingly awkward young man look out the place of his in uniform, beside his brisk, compete heel Hitlerine Conrads, but the way he saluted even his reports left much to be desired. Many, many a commanding officer at Nargent Plague had tried to reform him to give him, give up at, give up the attempt because of his family and his connections. He was no laughing stock. In fact, quite a reverse. Yet he was not entirely a favor of the high. Comrade at sea, what attracted people of the Noagant plague to the Fedbo Webble was not merely his fame as an athlete, but his agreeable manner, so different from that of many of the Germans. Also, there was his love of music. As he was an indifferent soldier, he was an indifferent musician and played the cello. To tell the truth, rather badly. However, he enjoyed playing the, with George's Verne, the local schoolmaster and father of the young Jean Paul. Messerio Varen was an equal bad violinist, 
but often when the priest came to occupy them in the evening on the sadly equipped piano, the three sat immersed in back in be- back in Beethoven until long after curfew. As a consequence, on those nights, the par- the padre was forced to stay with the schoolmaster until morning. In the single cafe in town, the Baroon Martin, the German soldiers playing the harmonica and singing as they drunk their beer, drink their beer, were ignored by the French natives. But whenever the tiny bell on the door uh, tinkled ever so slightly, the Herman hobbits entered. The fishermen and their belotted game glanced up and nodded pleasantly. When the curfew sounded, they picked up their cards, overted the gaze of the harmonica players, and left, bidding the flood wobble good night the way 